We're studying this evening from our study guide, section 33, X, 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 I, I, I. Jesus makes a preaching tour through Galilee. The scriptural references that are used in this particular section that we're looking at come from Matthew chapter 4, verses 23 through 25, Mark chapter 1, verses 35 to 39, and Luke 4, uh, verses 42 to 44. And these are times that are still relatively early in Jesus' ministry. It says, And in the morning, a great while before day, he rose up, went out, and departed into a desert place, and there prayed. And when it was day, he came out and went into a desert place. Uh, we, we find in verse uh, 42 of uh, Luke. And then it says, And Simon... Uh, they that were with him uh, followed after him, and they found him and say unto him, All are seeking thee. And he said unto the Lamb, Let us go elsewhere, that I may preach there also. And the multitudes sought him after him, and came unto him, and would have uh, stayed him, that he should not go from them. But he said unto them, I must preach the good tidings of the kingdom of God to other cities also, for therefore was, uh, therefore was I sent. And he, Jesus, went about in all Galilee into their synagogues throughout all Galilee teaching uh, in their synagogues and uh, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and casting out demons and healing all manner of disease and all manner of sickness among the people. And the report of him went forth uh, into all Syria. Uh, and they brought unto him all that were sick, holding with divers diseases and torments, possessed with demons and epileptic and palsied. And he healed them. And there followed him great multitude from Galilee and Decapolis, and Jerusalem and Judea and beyond Jordan. And he was preaching uh, in the synagogues of Galilee. And so that's a mix, of course, from those three particular writers. Uh, and uh, we're looking at uh, the synoptic gospels here. And uh, Jesus, as we left off and, and we were speaking in our last class, we were looking at some of the miracles which Jesus did specifically with his uh, Peter's mother-in-law and healing her. Uh, and it talks about his tour and travel around Galilee. And it speaks of that in a somewhat general sense, uh, with, uh, but... It's also mixed with a, a splattering here or there of things that he did along the way. Uh, and so we have some specific things and then some general things and then an all-around general kind of account uh, of what was going on. But the primary emphasis is that he is in the area of Galilee and he is traveling around uh, the Sea of Galilee, preaching and teaching the gospel, the good news of the kingdom. And now he was in Capernaum, and he was preaching and teaching there. And there were uh, large numbers of people who brought the sick and afflicted of that area. And we were told in the last lesson that he healed them all. And so... Uh, we don't know how long that went, but 
as we were looking in, in the last lesson, of course, he was in the synagogue, and then he went to Peter's house. Peter and Andrew and James and John uh, were there and some others. And that's where he healed Peter's uh, wife's mother, and that's where they brought the sick uh, that he healed them. And so we can imagine that understanding that uh, it was at sunset when people began to come looking for him, because sunset would be the next day, which would be Sunday evening. Uh, we go from what we think of as a Saturday evening into uh, Sunday evening, but uh, you know that's the Jewish time. The evening is before, and so what we think of as Friday evening was a Sabbath night, and then there was the Sabbath day, and then when the sun set, that started uh, Sunday evening. And so they brought him at sunset many more, and he was there healing them and dealing with them and talking with them. So we really don't have an idea of how long uh, people were coming and interacting and, and all of these uh, this situation that we see, but he, we're told that he healed them all. And then it says, and in the morning, a great while before day, he rose up and went out, that is, from Peter, and departed into a desert place and there prayed. And so it's, it's interesting that, you know, he probably was up till late as he was dealing with those individuals that were brought to him uh, who needed to be healed. And then we're told, a great while before day. And, you know, it, it's interesting because we don't have, you know, what, uh, wristwatches back then. So it's, it's kind of hard to say 4 o'clock in the morning, 3.30 uh, in the morning. I mean, what is a great uh, time before day? And these, these, these are the kind of terms that sometimes we just, you know, we hear about multitudes because... Uh, Apparently nobody thought, at least at the time, to take a head count. And so there we don't have, sometimes we, we do manage to get a few, the 5,000 he fed. But you know, here we're just told a great while before day. So that kind of leads us to, uh, and of course by day, we would mean the rising of the sun. And so it was a great deal of time, at least whatever a great deal is, I uh, don't know whether that's an hour, two hours, three hours. Uh, you know, if, if he was there late uh, with the people that he was dealing with, it's quite possible he didn't even go to sleep when everybody else uh, prepared to go to sleep or go to bed for night. Maybe, you know, it, it was, uh, you know, coming up on day and it was still a great while, but, uh, you know, there's no need to go to sleep now. And so he chose to go out into a... Uh, a desert place, or uh, today we think of it more as a deserted place, uh, and spent time there with God in prayer. One of the examples that Jesus gives us is is that you know he he was a man of prayer. Uh, you know, even though he was God in the flesh, he still nurtured the relationship that he had with God the Father by spending time uh, in prayer with Him, uh, praying, uh, preparing Himself, preparing His, his life, His mind, uh, centering and focusing. You know, Jesus had a lot of things going on in His life just as we do today. And I think sometimes uh, we, by missing uh, the opportunities of prayer and spending more than just a couple moments, we don't really get to center and focus uh, our life as we should. And sometimes uh, we find that our life is running us instead of us running our life. And so uh, in the sermon that uh, Jesus gives us in the Mount in Matthew chapter 6, and he talks about praying, and he talks about when you pray, you know, it's not always a, a public thing. There is public prayer that is involved in worship, but he talks about 
you know, going into your closet and there between you and God, uh, enter into fellowship, relationship, uh, considering, focusing, meditating on the things of God. Uh, in this particular case, uh, Jesus didn't necessarily have a prayer closet per se, but he went out into a deserted place uh, and found a place where uh, for some time he would be able uh, to pray to God uh, about his ministry and about the things that was going on. Uh, no doubt care and concern for uh, those he would he was choosing to be apostles and all that they had to do. And I know today, you know, we, we pray for people's hearts to be open, that people be receptive, that, uh, that God will prepare uh, the individuals and the hearts. We can't make anybody do anything, uh, but we can pray for situations and circumstances to present themselves in such a way it, that people are prepared to uh, receive the lesson and not be uh, distracted, that they can focus on the things that God uh, is giving them. While Galilee did have many cities, and many uh, places where people lived uh, or around, there was also a lot of areas that were deserted or desolate. Uh, a you know, when we think of a desert, we kind of think of places where uh, nothing grows except maybe cactus and it's 100 degrees or more all the time, uh, except maybe in the evening. That's just, that's not exactly the, the idea. And so the place which was somewhat deserted, uh, where people weren't, and so uh, basically what he did is he went out of the city there of Capernaum. It doesn't uh, give us a lot of, of directions as to where he went, but he went out of the city, uh, went into a place where uh, it could be a, a mountain. A lot of times he found himself uh, going up onto a mountain or a hill or a place where, again, he could see people coming, and if he chose to interact with them, he could, and if he didn't, he could just move a little bit around and, and be out of the way. And so, he gives us this example of, uh, of, of prayer. Uh, and again, it's, it's a solitary prayer. There is such as times of worship. Just a few minutes ago, we were uh, praying here. And so there is the prayer that takes place in uh, worship. Uh, and again, there is the prayer that takes place in a, in a private way. Uh, and we should, again, uh, keep both of those very active as we need to. We should follow along with the prayers that are being offered up when someone is leading prayer. Uh, it's our responsibility to get the best of that by listening to the prayer. And of course, at the end, being able to say amen. Uh, and then again, the things that we don't always uh, address, have time to address, whatever in the worship itself, those are things that we can deal with uh, on a more personal level. Uh, and so uh, Luke tells us that, uh, you know, he, he came out and went into a desert place uh, again when it was day. Now, some might see that as a, as a contradiction, but... Uh, you know, once the evening is over and once it's into night and as it's coming towards morning, uh, we're thinking more about the day than we are about the evening. Uh, for me, it's, it's, it's kind of hard sometimes to keep the whole thought process of the Jewish way of, of tracking things, you know, of, of when evening starts and when it's the next day. and. You know, I just, you know, look at my clock and I know what time it is and I know what day, try to keep track of what day it is. But, but sometimes it's when your day starts at sunset and that's really the evening and not the day. And the day begins somewhere, uh, what we think of as the day begins somewhere as the sun is preparing to come up. It gets 
again, kind of confusing to uh, discern when you know, the night is over and the day is there. I mean, I realize when it's dark, it's night, and when it's light, it's day, but uh, there, there is uh, opportunity to, uh, to have uh, some things. Uh, it talks about here uh, that they came out uh, looking for him. Uh, it talks about when it was day, at least when it was day, they discovered or they knew that he was gone and Simon, who uh, would have been uh, the head of the house, the household there, uh, where Jesus was, sun, was staying, and they that were with him uh, came out looking for him. Now it's kind of interesting that they know where to find him. And so even early on, it tells me that Jesus, while it may not specifically uh, state where he went or where, what he did, uh, it kind of tells me that Jesus had some habits about his prayer and places that he looked for in order to pray. And so when they realized that he was gone, Simon and those who were there uh, with him uh, went looking for him. They followed after him, uh, looking and desiring. And uh, they. the interesting thing that we find in verse 37 is, and they found him and said unto him, all are seeking thee. And so that, to me, is an interesting statement because that would imply that people just kept coming. You know, and we, in, in one way, we think about the fact that, you know, when it was evening, they started bringing people who were sick and afflicted to Him. And, you know, we, we think about the fact that maybe they uh, were ready to go to bed or go to sleep. And Jesus went out, but you know it, it seems that the way uh, the statement is made here, that it just never stopped. You know that that people were looking for him. Well, where is he? You know we we want to see him. Uh, you know we heard what he did here. We heard what he did there. Somebody told us what he did to this person or that person. He he healed this sickness. He did uh, whatever it was. And so there were still people who were seeking Him. Now, that's either because the morning was coming and they had broken off and had came back, or there were just still people coming. We don't, uh, you know, we don't have really a, a specific statement on that other than the fact that uh, you know, they, they're, they're just all kinds of people uh, wanting to see you. And, you know, again, we don't have a, a number that we can attach to that early on in the ministry. We know that uh, there was multitudes that were following him, and he fed about 5,000 at one time uh, that we speak of. And so we really don't have an idea at this specific point, uh, but... Jesus most certainly uh, was uh, getting good press. People were discussing Him, and they were doing it, most of them at least, in a positive sense. But on what we might say a, a sadder note, what were they looking for Him for? And that they saw Him as a great healer, and so they were looking for Him uh, to heal their friends, family, loved ones, whatever. And so uh, they weren't necessarily looking for Him for His teaching, even though He uh, was a great teacher and He did spend time teaching them. Uh, there is no doubt that the primary reason that they were looking for Him at this time uh, was that they knew He was a healer. And, uh, you know, when, when does healing stop? I mean, the sick, afflicted, the hurting, uh, you know, we even know that here. The hospitals are usually full and overflowing. And a lot of times people get caught in a situation where 
uh, you know, they have to stay in the emergency room or just put them in a hall somewhere because we just don't have any beds. Uh, and so there, there's always a great deal of sickness within communities. And when you add to the sickness, uh, the uh, possession that was going on with the demons or evil spirits, and uh, you add to that people who've been in accidents and have been uh, crippled and hurt, uh, everything from the, the blind to the deaf to those who couldn't speak to those who couldn't walk, uh, those who had various types of paralysis, perhaps had had strokes, uh, just just lots of things that uh, they all felt you know, in looking and hearing about what happens. You know that you know you need to take them uh, to see this man Jesus, which is in Capernaum, because and they could go down a whole list. You know your your mother, your father, your brother, your sister. They're blind, they can't hear, they can't talk. They, they had what we think of as a stroke. They were injured, they were hurt. And you know there was a list of all these other people that Jesus had healed. And so uh, as the multitudes begin to bring family and people there, uh, there, there is uh, a, a growing list of all the things. And you know, people say, well, you know, we've tried everything and you know, nobody's been able to help. And they'd say, yeah, but you haven't tried Jesus because I saw Him heal this person that had this or was doing that. And so as the uh, people were healed and as they went back and went out, they were talking to other people. People were seeing uh, them. And just as we uh, see before, uh, the blind began to see and people... Uh, I'm not sure that it's the same person, the lame or walking. Well, you know, it looks like him, but you know, it wouldn't be him because he hasn't walked in years. Uh, you know, and so you you see that, and and you know, are you so and so? And well, yes, I am. But well, what happened to you? And there's a man named Jesus. He's a teacher in in the area, and he he laid his hands on me, healed me, prayed for me, touched me, whatever. Uh, and so the reputation. Uh, all are seeking the everybody, uh, it seems. Now, it may not have been everybody in the sense of every single person, but the general sense and the way we th would say things, you know, just everybody's looking for you. Now, it may not necessarily be every single person, but there's more people looking for you than, than you would expect. And uh, it, it's interesting uh, because he said unto them, let us go elsewhere into the next towns that I may teach there also. Uh, and so that's it's kind of an interesting statement to, uh, to look at. You know, he has all of these people who are seeking him and looking for him and desiring him. Uh, he has a city uh, that people know where he is and uh, how exactly that uh, they can get in touch with him. And so it kind of seems strange probably to his disciples that seeing how people finally caught on and know where he is and all these people are looking for him and you say now you want to move on? Well, if you move on, then people are going to have to figure out where you're at and, and it's just like we're starting all over again. But it's, it's also interesting that he says, let us go elsewhere. Uh, there in verse 38, uh, in the Scripture that we're looking at, uh, he just doesn't say, I have to go, but he says, let us go elsewhere. And so these are those whom he is making apostles those who are going to be leaders in the church are going to be working for Him and with Him and for His cause. Uh, they will become the fishers of men, as He says. And so let us go elsewhere into the next towns. 
which again uh, were around the area of, of Galilee, that I may preach there also. Now, people are looking for Jesus because of his healing. But Jesus goes into the other city because he wants to what? Preach. You know, his people's emphasis is on the fact that, you know, he can heal me, he can heal my mom, my dad, whoever it is. People are all excited about this miracle worker that is among them doing great things. But while the miracles were done to confirm, the signs and wonders were done to confirm the things which Jesus was preaching, you know, he could just get into a healing ministry that goes nowhere else. He could get bogged down. And so Jesus says, we need to go uh, into the next towns. Uh, we need to keep moving that we may preach there also. For to this end came I forth. Jesus makes it clear that he didn't come forth uh, specifically to be a doctor or a healer, uh, even though he did uh, heal people uh, much better than any doctor ever did. Uh, but it, yes? Wasn't, wasn't that part of the reason why he was trying to do it a little bit indiscreet? You know, he kept telling them, about, especially when he healed somebody, he'd say, Don't tell, tell no one about this. I mean, you have the, you know, of course, they're going to they're gonna do it anyway, but. Uh, you know, yeah, I mean, the more people who were more, were more interested in the healing than the preaching. Um, and, uh, you know, when you, when you have more people that are just interested in the healing, it, it becomes difficult because when you're trying to, to talk, when you're trying to teach, when you're, you know, dealing with, with people for the purpose for which he says, I came, but you've got several hundred people screaming and yelling, you know, uh, about help me, help me, you know, master, help me, help me, help my mom, help my dad, help my child. You know, it, it, it gets somewhat chaotic. And so, uh, you know, he wants to go somewhere where he has a little bit of breathing room. Uh, and he specifically says, you know, to the next towns, plural. Uh, you know, he was there in Capernaum and people were interested in the things that were going on there in Capernaum. But, you know, he, he also knows that whatever town he goes into next, it's not going to be long before there is a line of people out of whatever house that he's staying at uh, desiring healing. Uh, you know, one of the things that Jesus said is, you know, the the poor you always have with you, and and obviously the sick you always have with you. As long as we are in, you know, this tabernacle, Paul says we do uh, moan. We're we're burdened with the sickness and illness, and you know, it's it's not just about one particular generation of people, but this is something that touches everybody. Somebody's child who can't walk. And, you know, we know all the different things that happen in life, and we try to correct it now, but we know children that are born that their legs have problems and they're growing in weird directions and... You know, we have people who are born with cleft lips and, you know, it's just on and on and on. Uh, and those people, generally speaking, you know, there, there was a little bit that could have been done for them at that time. Uh, but starting there and, and then all the way up to, uh, you know, I, I would love to have somebody just, and I know some of you do too, just lay their hands on and get rid of the arthritis that, you know, and I get through the day without... Uh, the hurting, the aching, the just want to sit somewhere because you don't want to stand up. Yeah, uh, and yeah, 
And so that's, that's really why I need to go into another city to a, another group of individuals or people uh, who would listen, um, first of all, to the, to the message preaching about the kingdom uh, of heaven. And that's what he was trying to do, just as John the Baptist had. He was trying to preach uh, to them. And, and Luke continues recording there, and the multitude sought after him and came unto him and would have stayed him that he should not go from them. And again, that is, they wanted, you know, he wanted to go into the next towns, but the multitude wanted him to stay there. And so now you're between a rock and a hard place again. Uh, you have all these people here who are still yet suffering and hurting, and then you have to. Think about the preaching of the gospel, and you know, at the early end, three and a half years seems like uh, kind of a long time. But we all know that three and a half years can get away from you pretty fast. You know, sometimes we think back on things, and you know, it's like, has it really been that long? You know, I, I didn't know or think it was that long. So again, he knows he has three and a half years, somewhere thereabouts, probably closer to three years now in the midst of all of this. And so he, he knows that he has a very limited amount of time. And this is the, the other side of that is, is as long as I'm staying here, I'm not there. And if I, I'm not there, I'm not ready to go to the next place, the next place, the next place. And he, he knows what he has to do. He knows what he needs as far as going around the areas of, of Galilee, around the, what we think of as the, the cities that were there in the cities uh, of Galilee. And he also knows later on he's going to go back down to Judea for a while. And so, you know, we, we have to get moving. We, we have to get this process going. We, we can't just uh, get bogged down. And so there's always those who would want him to stay. And, you know, if you go away, I don't know where you're at. What happens the next time something happens? Yeah, I, you know, you healed my mom, you healed my dad, you, you healed my son or daughter or wife or husband or whatever it was. But what happens if they get sick again? You know, I, I won't know where to find you. You know, you won't be around. And so, you know, you always want... You know, to hang on to that person who who's uh, you really can depend on, and so they saw it, you know, as uh, as something that they were losing, even though he may have already done what they needed him to do. They they wanted to keep him around, and I guess it's like in the the olden days, you know, the doctor come to town and and you know you you did everything. Lots of people would 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 help pay and they'd help feed and do everything they could to keep that doctor in town if he was a good doctor that he not go uh, somewhere else because you didn't want to be in a position where you didn't have a, a doctor. And so Jesus, being better than anybody else, you most certainly wanted to keep him. Uh, but he said unto them, I must preach the good tidings of the kingdom of God to the other cities also, for therefore was I sent. And so he spoke to his disciples, the apostles, to Simon and Andrew and James and John and some of the others perhaps that were there with him about let us go into the next towns also about preaching the gospel. And the people, uh, he also told them, you know, it's, it's just not fair for me to stay here you know, with you and the other cities not here of the tidings of the kingdom of God. And so we're back to that again. And so in a, what I would say in a polite way, he tells them, you know, that I'm not just here to be a doctor for you. You know, I'm here to uh, preach the glad tidings, the good tidings of the kingdom of God to these others also. And so... I can't think of a better way or more polite way to uh, to say to people, you know, I'm I'm not your doctor, 
you know, I'm, I'm here to talk about the kingdom and, uh, you know, I, I need to do that elsewhere also. And so we're told that he went about uh, all of Galilee. And of course, uh, we have uh, Brother McGarvey puts a note in here, the extreme length. Of course, the Holy Land's got weird boundaries, but you know, if you look at the extreme length of Galilee, we're told it was about 63 miles, uh, and it was about 33 miles wide. And so that uh, covers a considerable uh, chunk of land uh, that, uh, you know, not all of those cities were necessarily Jewish cities. Uh, in some of these cities, one of the things about Galilee especially is it being north uh, of Jerusalem and Judea and separated by the Samaritans and again up toward the area of Syria and some of the other places, it was more prone for Greeks, uh, Gentiles to also live in the area. And so um, around the area of Galilee, there was more of a mixing of the Greeks and the Gentiles as well as uh, the Jews in Judea and the southern part around Jerusalem uh, was more Jewish, more Israelite, uh, but there was a probably a, a greater mix of people in cities. And so some cities, since the Jews tend to separate themselves from the Gentiles, uh, the Gentiles, as they would come in, uh, to the area really established what we might think of as their own cities. And Decapolis is one of those places where there were several cities that had a lot of uh, Greeks. And this is toward the eastern side of the Sea of Galilee versus a more Jewish side, at least as I would think of it, uh, on the western side of the Sea of Galilee. And so... I didn't multiply that out, but if you take 63 and multiply that by 33, uh, you get an idea of the square miles, and that's a considerable chunk of uh, change there in uh, all of that. That would be almost uh, 2,100 square miles, so that's... Uh, considerable place and like we said he has three three and a half years every square mile does not have people in it as I said uh, Galilee had some desolate places but where there was cities and where there were people and where uh, there were Jewish settlements and all of that uh, he needed to get there uh, and he needed to do what he was sent to do and so he went into their synagogues throughout all Galilee teaching. And uh, this is a process that the Apostle Paul and, and others used. Uh, even when Paul and, and others went out into the Gentile world, so to speak, and one of the things we see Paul doing in the book of Acts is when he went into a city, he would look for a synagogue or he would look for a group of Jewish believers who were meeting for prayer or whatever. Uh, start with those who knew the law. Start with those who had access to the Scriptures. Generally speaking, the synagogues had access to the scrolls. Um, and you, what a what a pleasure it is today to be able to own our own personal copy of the scriptures and most of us probably have more than one copy you know and to be able to have that on our uh, iPads and laptops and our iPhones and you know wherever we go we can have the Bible with us but in Jesus day that just wasn't the way and so by going into the synagogues, uh, 
there was a supply of individuals who were familiar with the scriptures, and since he was going, uh, his ministry was primarily to the Jews, he could go into those synagogues and preach and have access to the scrolls and to the scriptures and could teach them, and they could verify and look at whatever scriptures that he was preaching. They could discuss that. And another thing that the synagogues, while he was, uh, his ministry was to the Jew, uh, it also gave uh, some of the Greeks, some of the Greeks would come, Gentiles would come to the synagogue after they had learned of God and they would come there and listen to the rabbis teach. And so it, it also gave him an opportunity, though not directly speaking to some Gentiles, he was also sowing a seed nonetheless to the Greeks or Gentiles that were uh, in the area. And so he was preaching to the Jews, but the message was also getting out to the uh, Gentiles, the Greeks. They saw what he was doing. They saw the miracles that he was performing. And the message also uh, went out from there. Uh, and again, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, casting out demons, healing all manner of disease and all manner of sickness. And of course, we know that there is a, a wide variety of medical conditions and situations uh, brought on on disease and sickness. And a report of him went forth into uh, all Syria. And Syria is north of Galilee. Damascus uh, is uh, one of the, the cities uh, that uh, had a relationship. I don't, you know, Paul was on the road to Damascus, and so apparently there was a synagogue and a good sized congregation of Jews, we would assume, even up into Damascus of Syria because Paul was given letters to those in Damascus that if he found anybody there in Syria that were following after Christianity, that they might uh, be arrested and be brought back to stand trial in Jerusalem. I know that's some time from now, but nonetheless, uh, you know, his, the, the, the events that are taking place find their way even into Syria. So when he's preaching in uh, Galilee, there are people who are coming down and hearing what he said and taking it back. And so they bring unto him all that were sick uh, with divers diseases, torments, possessed with demons, those who had epilepsy, palsy. He healed them all, crippled, whatever it, it was, and he healed them. Do they have the type of cancer back there? Uh, which. which 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 uh, palsy? No cancer. Oh, I'm, I'm sure. I mean, I'm <clears throat> I'm sure there probably was some kind of of cancers and things that were taking place. You know, they didn't uh, necessarily uh, think of them as we do, maybe in, by cancer, but they knew it was serious sores that wouldn't heal. Um, those kind of problems and. You know, lots of people, you know, in, in times past would die of stomach problems. They'd, they'd just say, you know, he, he died of stomach trouble. I mean, generally people, you know, that's not really a medical diagnosis. You know, did they have cancer in the stomach? You know, did they have bleeding ulcers? I mean, what, you know, they died of stomach trouble was because they thought it was their stomach and it was really their heart. So... Again, people didn't always have an accurate diagnosis of what was going on. They had some insight. Of course, Luke, being a physician, uh, is capable of talking about some of those from his standpoint. And we have a wide variety, you know, all that were sick, various uh, diseases. Um, you know, one of the things that, you know, is that was a, a plague at that time and, and has caused problems, of course, was leprosy. Leprosy was a, a, a disorder of the, of the skin and complexion. And of course, under the law of Moses, lepers were unclean. 
and uh, to live your life in such a situation where you could only be in fellowship with other lef lepers or various other diseases. And so, well, they probably could, the doctors in those days probably weren't well educated anyway in a lot of that stuff, I would say. You know, again, we talk about the practice of medicine. You know, it's, 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 it's one of those things where, you know, that you get some training, but, you know, you're, you, you try whatever that you have access to. And, of course, at that time, there was a lot of, of roots and different things uh, that, that people would, uh, and still to this day, do. But, uh, you know, they treated with what they had, um, you know, sometimes, you know, wine and, and uh, olive oil and, you know, those kind of things were, were medicinal and they would make tinctures by soaking, putting different uh, roots and things in wine and allowing, you know, the alcohol to, to create some kind of, uh, of medicine. And so, but... You know, it would be difficult. One of the things, especially epileptic, I mean, even, I mean, just in recent years, we've been able to deal a little bit better with those who have epileptic seizures. Uh, and of course, at that time, between, you know, you'd have to tell the difference between epilepsy and, and being possessed by demons in many ways. The symptoms would, would kind of mirror each other. And so being able to discern whether a person actually was possessed by a demon or if they just were having epilepsy. Uh, you know, but Jesus, you know, he healed them. And there followed him great multitudes from Galilee and Decapolis. And this is a, uh, the term Decapolis has to do with a uh, 10 cities that were toward the eastern side of the Sea of Galilee. And there is a listing there of some of those cities that uh, Brother McGarvey gives us. Uh, and also Jerusalem and Judea and from beyond Jordan, you know, it just, his reputation keeps expanding and people are looking for him and desiring him. And we're told he was preaching you know, in the synagogues there in Galilee. Does anybody have any uh, questions or other comments? Talking about that diver disease, he talked about the devil being what casting out the devil. He called it diver disease. Well, the, the word divers means diverse. Devil. No, diverse. Like many different kinds, diverse. The English word today would be diverse. It, it just means many different kinds different things, so different diseases, and he healed all the, the different diseases. In closing this evening, we wish to thank you again for spending your time in study with us. We hope the lesson has been uplifting and motivational. We encourage you to return again for our next lesson. Until then, may we invite you to visit our website. You will find many study opportunities. Our resource page has links to the Gospel Broadcasting Network, a 24-7 station with many great Christian programs and speakers. In Search of the Lord's Way, with Brother Phil Sanders. We have two links for Bibles and downloadable software. If you are looking to really expand your knowledge, perhaps you might like to try World Video Bible School, a college-level learning site free of charge. So, until next time, may God bless and keep you in His care as we walk together in His truth. And remember as always, the Churches of Christ salute you.